Howdy guys, it's Luke at Geek Gaming and in this video we're gonna we're gonna break it to make it. I'll see you at the end. So to start off we're gonna be using some green florist wire. This can be purchased from most florists or just online for very cheap. A good set of pliers, um, some that have got a really rough texture on the inside to help grab the wire because it does get quite tight. And then a decent pin vise, a drill, a dremel, anything like that. What we're going to do is we're going to stick the florist wire in the end of the pin vise or your drill. So make sure you straighten that out first before you do so. You want to keep these as straight as possible. Remove the back off your uh, pin vise. Um, so when you come to the next step of rolling it, um, there's nothing, it's not lifted up. You can go as flat to the table as possible. And make sure you do this as tight as possible. Grab the other end with your pliers. Like I've said, make sure they're really rough. Make sure you clamp it down and get a good firm grip. And then simply roll the wire together. It's very simple. When you get into a routine, you can knock loads of these out in no time at all. Or you could just buy double car security wire, which I didn't have. But this is a cheap alternative if you don't have any. Then it's just a matter of painting them. I did them black where I should have just done them brown really. Um, and then I hit them with a brown spray can. I went on with a bit of silver. Rather than dry brushing them, I just put it on a bit of uh, sponge and just dragged it down uh, and rubbed it, rubbed it on willy nilly and rough. Uh, and it came out quite well. Um, so quite a nice, easy, quick way of getting them silverish. Makes them look quite old. After doing that, we repeat the process with orange. Um, this is just a bright orange from uh, Vallejo. Um, and all I do is do the same process. Uh, if it's a bit thick, just rub up and down till you sort of rub it off and back in places. And then you just get a nice rusty rebar look as you'll see here. So find a drill bit that's about the same or maybe a little bit smaller than the rebar. We're drilling this into a blister pack. Um, just make sure that hole is as tight as possible. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> um, and then push that into the container, blister, whatever you're using as a mold. Make sure it's a good tight grip um, so it won't move when we come to pouring the casting plaster in later. The casting plaster I'm using is the Lux APS casting plaster, but any casting plaster will do. Um, I'm not going with a really strong casting plaster for the reason that it'll be hard to break later on. Now, so you don't have to paint it, all I've done is add a bit of black ink and some grey pigment powders. Any pigment powder will do, um, and that's give it a really nice sort of dark concrete look. However, remember to do it a bit darker than you actually want, because when it's completely dry, it will lighten quite a bit once the moisture's gone, okay? Um, if any stick out, just poke them in with your fingers, and give it a tap to get some bad bubbles out, but you want it to look quite rough and sort of natural concrete anyway, so some blemishes are fine. Then it's just a matter of chipping off um, the rebar from the bottom. Make sure you use a, a, some broken clippers for this because you can damage your clippers. These are my clippers for cutting brass rod and things like that that are already damaged from doing this. Then pop it out gently um, just by pressing on the back. And it should be pretty set hard, but however, it's not dry, it's very moist. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this over to the oven. We're gonna pop it in. And set the oven to around 120 to 140 degrees. The, uh, the reason I'm not going to set it too high is because there's a plastic coating on the rebar. Um, so if I was to turn it up too high, we might melt that and ruin his paint job underneath. Um, so that's why I did it low. I left it in about an hour and when I got it out, um, it was relatively dry on top. However, it wasn't dry completely through, which we'll see later. But onto this. Um, Cut your base out, 
Uh, it can be any material whatsoever, a bit of plastic card, a bit of uh, EPVC, Foamex, MDF. I'm using balsa because I had a, a tiny bit laying around, um, but use what you want. We're going to stick that on with some hot glue. And then just stick it into place. Do stick it into place a lot more central than I have. I've put it off to one side, uh, but it is a test piece, so I'm not overly bothered. And then I just put some hot glue on the front and the back just to sort of hold it upright in place before we go to the next step. Now to build up the land at the front and the back and to make it very strong so it won't come off this base, we're using the Luke's APS modeling compound. This can be purchased from the store link below. Um, and all you do is add uh, two parts compound to one part water. You get a very nice um, sort of paste. Um, it is quite messy and sticky, uh, but just place it on there and when that goes off in around 15-20 minutes, um, it'll be solid and that means that the, the plaster wall isn't going to break off. It'll make it very strong at the bottom. If you do get any mess on the um, stone wall, a concrete wall, whatever you want to call it, use a damp brush to remove that. Now I'm going to print some details on this Shadow 5.5S that was sent to me by Quiditech. Um, I'm going to print off some small aquillas and some little detailing like electrical boxes and stuff just to see if it can print out some super small um, details. They did come out rather well. Um, I was quite shocked to say how small I actually made them. Uh, the details were quite nice. They printed in around 25 minutes um, and they look pretty good as you'll see in a minute. I just cleaned them, washed them, removed them and then sprayed them when I was done. Thank you Quidditech for sending me this printer to have a play with and I'm sure I'll use it further in the future. For painting them I sprayed them brown and sprayed them silver um, and I, I gave the Aquila a bit of a gold uh, dry brush. I chucked some crappy brown, um, I think it were a craft paint or crappy emulsion that I've got in a pot that I couldn't even remember where I've got it from and just brushed that over so with the next step uh, there's none of the white uh, compound showing through. For basing that to make it quick, I used the Luke's APS basing glue, uh, which is a fast drying glue that dries in around 15 minutes. So we're making this as quick as possible. So to put a nice earthy look on the bottom of this uh, wall, we're gonna be using the Luke's APS Arid Earth Basing Mix. This is designed potentially for miniatures, uh, but it looks great on terrain pieces like this because you don't use much um, and you just chuck it on and get it off. The reason it looks so nice is because it's ground to smaller than sand it's, it's literally a dust mixing with all different sorts of stones and gravels to give you a nice realistic sort of arid finish um, and you don't have to paint it or mess around you just stick it on a couple of tufts and you're done um, and the base ready range is full of awesome products like this uh, to make your terrain and mint your basin as quick as possible so do check that out in my shop below at www.geekgaming.co.uk now all i do is stick the aquila on with a bit of super glue and the little electric box exactly the same. I'm using some gel super glue um, just so it's on there nice and thick and hopefully it might break when we break the, the wall later um, or if it just falls off then we know for future. Now let's start breaking it. What I did is that at first I just started breaking it and I found that it was quite damp inside um, so it was quite easy to just break. What I should have done is left this for a good week or so um, then it would have been proper dry and I think would have get more frag it would have fragmented more and looked a lot nicer however just doing this does make it look very good and it does break up very nice and make very nice rubble rather than breaking it like this I should have just hit it with an hammer in places that I wanted to break bits off um, <laughs> but the rebar makes it rather strong so when you come in to break it it does crack and it does sort of fragment from the areas quite well. It would do it far better if it wasn't as moist in the middle. Um, but I tried putting some bullet holes in by sticking a sculpting tool in and just spinning it round. That did work, but it was kind of mushy was the plaster still. Um, and it's just because literally it's not had long enough to dry and it is quite a, a quite thick cast. Um, I think it was just over a centimetre uh, thick. Um, so. That's why. Uh, if we'd have left it to dry, it looked a lot better than this. However, as a test piece, I'm very happy with it. It's been very fun. And just smashing this up later on with an hammer, once we've got a, a full fortress done and then we can smash it up afterwards, it's going to be fun. Um, so, yeah. 
What do you think, guys? Do put in the comment below. Would you destroy it? Would you leave it as it is? Or would you just see how it broke as you played with it and stored it? It'd be nice to know. And I, is it the future of terrain? What do you think? I'll see you at the end. So guys, something a little bit different. This has been like a little bit of an idea of mine and I thought I'd test it to see whether it's it makes it stronger, which it does. It's, it's concrete and re rebar, it works. A couple of things I'd change, I'd make the rebar a bit thicker and um, the plaster, I will keep the same, but before I do any work on it or try breaking it, I will let it completely dry out first. It was still, it was dry, uh, but there was still some moisture in the deeper components. So when it came to like trying to do any detailing or chipping or bullet holes, it didn't chip away, it just sort of mushed together. Um, so if it were to leave it for three days a week, um, it would be a lot better. What's gonna come is I'm gonna build some, I'm gonna build a, a like a plastic card version of it then we're going to make some molds um, and then we're going to make one completely out of plaster and rebar so i thought i'll document the whole thing um it might be a while because I'm, I'm gonna have to do this in my free time because it's something i want to do on a board later on um but i think it'll make a very interesting video and then we can have but concrete buttresses and concrete detailing barbed wire along the top and all sorts of things and then if we want we can have it as proper and then we can damage it and then as we damage it wherever anything falls or breaks we can just glue it in place on a board and i thought that'd be awesome and with it being plaster if you're chipping it and breaking it as you're playing with it and it's already colored it's just going to look better the more it gets destroyed <laughs> so you've got nothing to lose um if you've liked this idea do put in the comments below or if you've tried something like this before do let me know um i really like it i like the idea of even though it is, I wouldn't say indestructible, it technically is because the worse it is, the better it looks, um, if you like that destroyed look. What do you think? Pop in the comments below. So guys, this is the, um, the new year, new me. Loads of little videos like this, loads of gaming boards and tables. And if you want me to keep doing this sort of content, do support me by using my shop. Um, so you can buy the scenics, can the, the products used in the video, and that is my main income. And that really does support me because it makes me sell and produce scenics for you guys. If you're not into that, I do have a Patreon uh, where there's you know Discord features and special discounts and stuff like that to the range every now and again. Um, and also I can offer exclusive products and things like that to my patrons that support me that way. There's also affiliates to Element Games, where if you want to buy your games workshop or board games and things like that, if you use that link, I get a nice little cut back. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you for the next one. Love, love, love.